straight to conversations on social issues. My name is Monica and I work at the reference desk out front. Uh, we do this series in the library as a way to encourage a diversity of thoughts and opinions. So we do hope that you feel comfortable sharing today. And when you do, please remain respectful of your peers or peer. <laughs> um, and I'd like to introduce Erin Ness, who is an SEC student and member of Lifelong. I'll be talking to you today. Hi guys. Hi. Sorry that there's not more of you. So you two are going to get picked on. So, um, pretty much because I hate lecturing, um, I do more of a Q&A type of situation. Um, also, to tell you a little bit about myself, so you don't just think they grab some random person off the street to talk about HIV. Um, I used to work for public health. I was one of the people that would go into the bathhouses and do on-site testing. Um, and would do the full gamut of STDs and HIV and have conversations with people in the space where things were happening. Um, last year I moved over to Lifelong to start doing outreach coordinating, so it's just a different agency and I get to go to more places where um, high-risk behavior is happening. Um, so, on that note, with the new stuff that's Coming on with HIV, um, the big one that we're talking about today is PrEP, also known as Truvada. Um, what do you guys already know about PrEP Truvada? Um, I haven't learned much about it until today. I don't only recently heard about it because it was a kind of revolutionary agencies with the HIV scene. So um, I've seen advertisements for it around you know, half of the whole project. Okay. And so this was a You've never heard of it before? Okay, well, what it is, um, PrEP, it stands for pre-exposure prophylactics. That's a pill that you take once a day to stop you from getting HIV. Um, you get it through your physician. Um, it's prescription only, and then you also have to, it, it is a different way of thinking about your sex life and about your health in general, because if you're not somebody that likes to go to the doctor, that's one barrier against it, because you're going to the doctor every three months, because they have to um, check different things on you, um, it, within your blood, and that's fine. Um, and so there's that. To springboard off of that, what they're checking for is there's three large side effects, but not very dramatic side effects. Um, the, one, the one side effect that everybody is a little up in arms about that is a barrier um, is it raises creatine levels in your blood, diminishing kidney function. Um, that in studies that has only been shown to Diminish kidney function by like one or two percent. I don't know the percentages for exactly. It's like one point da da da. Um, and once you go off of Truvada prep, um, those kidney functions come back. And then you can also take prep in um, in vacations and like if you notice. You are being, you're doing a little more risky behavior at this portion in your life, then you're on it. You get into a stable relationship that you're not doing risky behavior, then go off of it. You fall back, so forth and so on. Um, another side effect is for two weeks that you first started, <coughs> sorry, um, you get a little stomach upset. A little, so. For two weeks, you're a little farty. And then another side effect is it can mess with um, your dreams a little bit, just for two weeks when you first start. Um, it just makes them very, very visual and very vibrant, and they can run along a spectrum of nightmares. So those are the three major side effects. Um, and Pretty much, it, it really is just a pill that, that you take to, 
stop you from getting HIV. It is 97 to 98% effective. Um, and so it just has boiled down to, if you're negative, you take PrEP. If you're positive, you take a combination of two other pills, whichever pills work with your, with your virus in general. Um, the way that I describe PrEP is that um, it hasn't erased condom use. It is, condom is the big umbrella, and say that umbrella breaks or slips off, or there's a multitude of things that can happen with that condom. This is that backup. Um, I wish I could fill, fill up a little bit more of an hour, but. Um, do you guys have further questions? Like, kind of tweeze it out a little bit more. Do you think it's shaping the, or I think shifting the way that we associate the stigma of HIV with yes. people? Yes. No? Very much so. Okay. Um, because it is boiling it down to you're negative, you take this pill, you're positive, you take this pill. And so it really is taking that stigma out of out of HIV land. It hasn't gotten there just yet, but um, it definitely is helping. It's also helping people empower their sex lives as well, because for so long, um, HIV AIDS was a death sentence. Like people would view it and they'd go, you know what, I'm, I, I'm not going to have sex because I might die. And that's just, so now there's this bill that you can take and you can go and do, do different sex acts that you would do before this happened. So you're saying uh, you take the pill every day? Yes. Right? So, then, uh, so you don't need to care about HIV? Mm -hmm. um, you still do because it's only 98 to 99% effective. Yeah. There are cases that um, so far there's been three cases that people have contracted HIV after they've started taking crap. Um, that's why, because if there was something that was 100% effective, oh my gosh, like that would, that would be the best thing ever. Um, but you still have to, I mean, you have to kind of worry about it, but not, not worry, worry about it. How long does uh, um, one have to take the pill before engaging in a sex act and then, um, and then also after? Okay, for, for males, you have to take the pill for roughly about two weeks before you, before you do anything risky, um, i.e. bareback sex. For females, it takes about a month to get into the system. Um, they've just done testing and stuff in different body tissues. Um, oddly, it gets into rectal tissue a little bit faster than vaginal tissue. So that's why they say that. So men two weeks, women about a month. <laughs> and is it, is it um, equally uh, pr protective uh, or preventative um, uh, with different kinds of sex? I mean, you kind of answered that to some extent, but like oral sex, yeah. say, versus? Yeah. It's um, depend depending on the type of sex you're having. If you're having run-of-the-mill, just this sex over here, then you're fine. When you get into the more riskier sexual behavior, say, like bondage, blood play, um, I work in sex land, so I'm trying to censor myself and not scare you guys. <laughs> um, anything that would involve opening a vein, then you run a little bit more into riskier behaviors that you could fall into that 2% category that, say, um, I'm going to get 
touch graphic. Um, say I have a big cut on my hand and somebody has a big cut on their genitals. There we go. Like open to open sore to open sore contact is faster um, to contract HIV. That's why when HIV leaves the body in air, it dies. It's just, it's dead. So the only um, transmission is when there's like an airtight seal. Um, that being said, people that, this is the new negative of, I read an article last week that undetectable is the new negative. Um, have, have you guys heard that, like somebody's HIV positive but they're undetectable? No. You haven't heard that? So what that means is, say somebody's positive and I pull 10 vials of blood from them. HIV will only show up in one of those vials of blood and it will be like a chocolate. Like, that's the technical terminology. Um, that it just, it's, it's still there because they haven't found a cure for it, but it's less likely to be transmittable. Um, that's why you still use condoms or you get on prep. show that. Actually, um, there was a study, and I apologize since I primarily work in gay land. Mm -hmm. I, I do need to bone up a little bit more on female stuff around this. Um, but there, there was a study that was done that they can, pregnant women can take Truvada that are positive and the baby does not have um, HIV. So, so it just kind of depends on that factor. Of they haven't said anything that it is going to um, harm reproductive in the future. Do you know anything about how widely used it is at the moment? I'm sorry. How widely used it is at the moment? Um, or not widely used? <laughs> it's it's unfortunately not widely used. I'm glad you. I'm. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, because there are a lot of barriers to taking PrEP. Um, one is cost. The cost of PrEP is $1,300 a month. Um, and depending on your copay, um, it can run anywhere from 40 bucks to 200 bucks. So there's been um, a, a lot I say a lot, for organizations that have come through and said, we will pay the copay. Gilead being one of them. Gilead is the maker of Truvada. They say, hey, we want people on this drug because it is saving, saving lives and easing a lot of stress. Um, so they will pay your copay. And then there's um, PrepDAP that's here in in Washington State, that that is, let me look at my note really fast. Um, prep, because last week a lot of these copay organizations um, came out with this is the stipulation now, so they changed their stipulation. So I'm going to, um, and it just, be, it really depends on your insurance, on insurance and stuff like that. Um, the awesome thing here in Washington State, though, is if you are on Apple Health, which we're all college kids, so um, you get it for free. You show up, you talk to your doctor, they go down the risk factors for you, and then if you fall into the risk factor, you get a, you show up to the pharmacy and sign and there you go. You're hiding behind me, so I guess I don't know. It's okay. Um, 
So barrier one, cost. Barrier two, if you're married, it raises a lot of red flags for your partner, your wife, your husband on insurance of like, why are you taking an HIV pill? So that's barrier two. That came up last week for me too. And I was trying to get somebody insured that is married and so he said his wife would say, mm, why are you doing this? So barrier two, and then stigma is barrier three. A lot of people um, just don't want to deal with it. They, and it's kind of a sad situation when you do it because it is your, it is your health. Um, if, you, if you are in a riskier lifestyle, this is a good thing. I'm personally on it. Um, just that's my personal choice to be on it. Because that's why. Um, and I have been called a few choice words. Um, a popular one is Truvada or that I'm sure you guys have seen that around Capitol Hill. Um, it's kind of one of those like reclaim things. A lot of people put like hashtag Truvada or on t-shirts. I I have not embraced it because I'm just not going to. Um, but it it is empowering your sex life and. A lot of news came out when they first started pushing this that this was going this was just an excuse to give this population a right to be horse, a right to be sexually promiscuous and to just do whatever they want without thinking about it. Um, that's not really the case. What what they have found out is that um, people that do take it are actually starting to be a little bit more healthy and a little more health conscious because they go to, they do go to the doctor every three months. Well, when you know you have to see your doctor every three months, you might eat a little more vegetables here or you might run an extra mile on that treadmill because you know you're going to see your doctor and they're going to talk schmack to you and that's just that. So. Um, I think I covered the barriers. Other questions? No questions. Yeah. You know the rise of um, legislation for attempted legislation to protect sex workers? And you said that the male sex workers are one of the population that's most at risk for mm -hmm. um, HIV or positive, you know, testing positive for it. Do you hope to see that Truvada takes you know, a bigger presence on that scene towards legislation? Yes. And more advocacy towards that? Yes. Um, with that, because they, there are um, male sex workers do fall into the category that they they're at really heightened risk because of the type of um, that type of work. They fall into the category over here of sexual acts that when. When someone, I, I have a buddy of mine is an escort, and I talk to him about this, and he goes, well, I get paid $50 if I have this sex over here with a condom, da da da, or I get paid $250 if the guy says, I don't want to use condom. So when you're in that situation, $50, $250, and you're coming up, with, rents do, you're going to take a little bit more of a risk. Um, but with, with Truvada, um, it's, it was marketed to serodiscordant couples, and then they opened that up to sex workers and um, people, I know at the STD clinic, to fall into their prep category, you have to have a history of rectal gonorrhea and um, un unprotected sex history. And then they sign you up for PrEP. Um, some primary care providers, they don't care. They say, you're, you think you're at risk, there you go. And then some
from primary care don't even know about it. Well, can you go back? What was the term you just said? Uh, um, Steroid discoordinate? Yes. I, sorry, I, I was like, that's the only $100 word that I've used. Um, that means a positive partner and a negative. So, um, in, in that situation of positive and negative partner, um, if that positive partner has adhered to their medication and they're in that undetectable category, and the negative partner finds out, you know, PrEP doesn't work for me. It's these nightmare dreams that I'm getting, the creatine level works with my body, um, and they have to go off of it. It's, they're not transmittable. Like, they're undetectable. It's, it boils down to you really have to be trying um, in that situation. Um, I think they start looking like questioning when it gets into like the 10 year old category. Um, but not that I'm aware of. You snuck in late. Do I need to bring you up to speed on anything? No, I'm just Well, it's just, like I was telling them, um, condom is the big umbrella, prep is the little umbrella, yeah. condom breaks, slips off. Yeah, that's what I mean, I mean, it's, size it's, not, the, it's not, I mean, like, uh, it's not, like, it's not, like, a very safe way to depend on condom, I mean, how many people, like, it's on the condom, it's missing, yeah. yeah, and that's, it, it, it is very true, because condoms, um, this was happening on Capitol Hill, a little bit ago, there was some guy that got angry for some odd reason, and he was going around to the condoms in the bar and poking holes in them with little needles so you wouldn't notice it. Yeah. And so that's prime cause of in, um, infection rates. Is Sometimes it could be like uh, my facts are uh, yeah. mistakes, probably. Like, exactly. Some small mistake or something. I mean, I've had I've had condoms break on me. Um, I've fallen into the category of you drink a little too much and it's not right by the bed. You have to go to the bathroom to get it. Um, do do I recommend that? No, because one it's just messy. Um, but it happens, and now with this, you don't have to. Stigma that you were talking about earlier, and the sort of the like, Trubado more term. Mm -hmm. Do you find that that's people who are more involved in the communities where prep is something that is used, or is that sort of an outside perspective? Um, it's hard. It's it's hard to say really because um, it it runs a lot of reclaiming reclaiming language, like, um, where, I'm trying to choose my words, um, where I don't get offended by words because they're words. They can't, they're not, I'm not going to cry about it. But I can, for example, I can say, I can say faggot. I can say truvada for because I'm on truvada and I'm gay. So, but if you were to say that, I'd be like, oh, wow, um, yeah. And it would ruffle feathers. Mm -hmm. Now, with that, it did, the Truvada Horror did come from an outside thing. Um, I don't remember who coined it the first, but it, it was a negative slam against people that were taking it. And then a group over here was like, well, I'm just going to reclaim it. So that it was really a fast reclaim. Yeah. Um, it it wasn't like the N word mm -hmm. or or back end because that's a 
long reclaim, but the Trubana ore was a fast one. Um, I think it just boils down to like what group you're talking to yeah. and what um, vernacular it's used in. Okay. Anything else? Well, I guess on that, I, oh yeah. I'm saying like, uh, what's, what's like the manufacturer's uh, responsibility with the... What, manufacturer of the drug or... No, the... Condom? Condom, sorry. Oh. Um, they, they don't have like... Um... Like, what, what I'm saying, I, get, I, have, I have like, uh, you know, when people say, well, I have a candle, so I'm not concerned about anything. Right. It could, uh, could make uh, makes like the risk higher probably because when people when there are no candles, well, the people would say, well, it's there's true. no possible we, we can't you know, so Yeah. But when there's candle, I mean, and this candle probably has some issues or some um, higher risk at this time because it's more appealing for people. You know. Well, with with the responsibility of the condom manufacturers, that's why they all condom manufacturers, you um, the Gilead manufacturers, they say. 97, 98, 99% effective. So there's that percentage, that the 3% that will fail on you. Um, and that's that's their way of covering their butt. It's saying, you know, here's a product we have proven and we have tested that it will protect up to this. But depending on the type of sex you're having, this, that falls under the 3%, um, it might break, it might slip off. You may have used too much lube, you may not have used enough lube. Um, that's, that's those companies covering their butt. And then Gilead, um, Gilead, the maker of Truvada Prep. I really wish they would just change the name to Prep because I have to interchange it. Um, they, through all the studies that they've done, um, they have found some people do still contract HIV, even with being on PrEP. There's been three, three cases that I know of. Um, but those people also came forth and was like, mm, there were little holes in their like, oh, I only took the pill every other day. Um, dropping it down to 75% effective. Or, I, I'm i not good with the statistical math. I flunked out of that one, so. Um, so, it cuts it by the half-lives of, if you miss a dose, then it cuts it down to 80% or um, But yeah, it's the manufacturers, they do that percentage of you're protected this much, so when so when a condom breaks and someone gets gonorrhea or syphilis, chlamydia, you name it, um, they're like, we told you, <laughs> sorry, you can't trust it wholeheartedly. So if you said nobody has ever found a cure for HIV, right? Right, right. there's so, still not a cure. But the pill that you're taking can stop you getting, from getting HIV, right? right? So that's, I think this pill must be really strong. Mm -hmm. um, to your body. I think it may, it, it, yeah, it, it may have a uh, bad influence on mm -hmm. your body in the future, right? It may. It may. Right. It, it may. Yeah. Um, for, and that's why it's a, it's a very personal decision right. to, to take it. Because um, FDA approved it in 2012. It was kind of being used already way before 2012 with the serodiscordant couples. Um, but, and now there's the big push for it. So 2012 to 2016, yeah, I had to check. Um, that's not long enough to see right. long-term effects. For me, taking it and thinking, thinking about that, like, oh, it might cut down my kidney function. It might do, it might cut down bone density. It might do that. I'm kind of looking at it as 
when I'm 80, if I have a little less bone density, if I have to pee a little more often, I'm okay with that. Versus if I have a really fun weekend and then I am paying a lot of money because um, it, it, it's, it's a business. HIV is a business. Um, if for positive folks, there's many more doctor's visits, many more co-pays, um, a lot more medication. So, so yeah, I'm $1,300 a month versus they, depending on which, what strand you get, um, HIV could bounce up to uh, 15,000 a month, depending on your body and what's what's going on with it. So that's why I do it. Now you have me thinking that I might have to like pee 90 times a night when I'm 80. <laughs> I don't that's want to. Drug actually do in the body. So um, it is, that's a really good question. Um, it stops adhesion. So HIV enters the body um, and it just it stops the HIV from adhering to cells. I don't know the science, science but it, it just stops the HIV from entering the cell and replicating.
Just looking. Exactly. <laughs> and they and you can't do that. You really can't because um, if you ever really want to be depressed some night, look up um, HIV in the 80s pictures. Um, they're rough. They are really, really rough. Um, a really good movie that depicts is called The Normal Heart. That's if you guys want to know history of HIV. Any HIV class you guys take, they're going to show in the band played on. That's a really good movie too. Makes you cry. Really does. I've had to watch it like 90 times. I fall every time. Um, but the normal heart kind of puts more of a um, humanistic um, pull on the heartstrings effect. So. What about the effects on the various duties? Does it have any? No. Nope. It doesn't complicate. It doesn't, um, it doesn't inter, or there hasn't been studies that I've seen that people, it interacts with syphilis. The sad thing is in, in Seattle, with the onset of PrEP and us amping it up, amping it up, amping it up, we have kind of seen a little syphilis gonorrhea rise. It's a new toy on the market. And um, when you tell a population of people that have been scared for so long of their own bodies that here is this pill that you can take and you don't have to be like scared, scared. Something's, something's gotta give, so. Anything else? I really, when I was like writing this up and everything, I had so much material, and I was like, I hate lecturing to people, and I'm sitting there going like, this is going to be an hour, it's going to be good, da 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 da, and now I'm sitting in front of you guys, I'm like, oh, it's a pill that you take and you don't get HIV, here's side effects and stigma, and so there's that. I wish I had, I wish there was more, but it is really that cut dry and simple. Is there an increase in sort of community organizations that are starting to yes. talk about the film? Yeah. Um, there's End Aids Washington that's part of Lifelong. Um, Gay City has their own prep clinic. Um, the STD clinic has their own has their own prep clinic. Um, uh, Center for Cultural. I know people that work there. They're amping up. I can look that up and get it to you guys if you really want. Um, they're amping up the on take of prep in minority because um, that is another big community that is facing HIV stigma um, of just the minority cultures, whether it is a machismo culture or the down low culture. Um, a lot of people fall into those categories of, I'm doing this risky behavior over here, but it's on the down low and I'm not really talking about it. And then it goes over here. It's this ebb and flow situation. So you think that makes it harder to talk about and to access people? Oh yeah. Have you had any? Um, one, um, one, one gentleman that I counseled um, up in Everett, because Everett is a smaller town. Um, I'm sitting there, we're talking, and he's telling me his risk factors. I'm not breaking any HIPAA laws, I haven't said any names. Um, he's telling me his risk factors, and he just has sex with his wife. That's it. And I'm like, you don't have risk factors, unless you know your wife is cheating on you. Um, so I'm not going to do a test on you. And it finally came out that he has a buddy on the side. And so 
he falls into a category of you have risk factors because of this buddy on the side. But he didn't want to tell me about this because in his culture that is, sh that is shameful um, to have a, a buddy on the side. So I was like, really I care about what you do on the weekend as much as you care about what I did on the weekend. So you gotta tell me these things. Um, but once that came out, we were able to do the test and get him. Um, fortunately, he's native. That's not a. Yeah. Um, but I was able to talk to him through things and say, you know, you need to not worry about what people are going to think of you because when your health is on the line, your health is on the line. And if someone is going to call you names or think less of you, because of something you enjoy doing, that person's got to go. You don't need that person in your life. So. Okay. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? I don't, I don't think so. I think we've covered anything. If I'm leaving anything out, please, I'm just over at Height, um, above Out of the Closet Thrift Shop. Um, Really, that building is kind of the HIV building because there's out of out of the closet thrift shop, and Gay City does testing in the back room of that. Mm -hmm. Then there's AHF AIDS Healthcare Foundation that is in the middle, and they have a whole clinic of their own. And then there's um, Lifelong that we do housing, um, chicken soup brigade, prevention work. I'm the I'm one of the prevention team. Um, and that's what we do on the fourth floor. So yeah, if you guys had any, have any questions that you're going, I don't really want to ask him in an open forum, just come over there, or I also have cards that I can give you too. Um, let me find it. They're still working on getting me cards, so these are funny cards. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Uh, drop drop some surveys. If you can film on, that'd be great. If you have any ideas for future acoustic sessions, um, you can drop them on there or talk to Kimberly or Kelly, and they'll be happy to do things out with you. And thank you to Aaron. Thank you guys.